faculty, alumni, and community demands for divestment and urge you to listen to our requests. Thank you. Good afternoon. <clears throat> um, I'm Scott King, and uh, I'm the executive director of Mission Zero, um, the founder of the Climate Action Fund, and I have a small gift for you from the Climate Action Fund. But most importantly, I wanted to um, talk to you about the climate change from a donor and alumni perspective. Um, today I stand before you to advocate for CU's commitment to not only leading the nation in climate research, but also in climate action. The burning of fossil fuels is a primary driver of climate change causing devastating impacts on our environment and global health. To have any chance of combating climate change, we must transition away from fossil fuels toward renewable energy sources. The fossil fuel industry, with its vested interests, has hindered progress in reducing emissions and has promoted misinformation about the severity of, climate, of our climate crisis. As we face this crisis, it's crucial for the University of Colorado to align its actions with its values, and in doing so, I propose the following. First, I urge the regents to direct the university and its foundation to divest from fossil fuel companies and reinvest in a just energy transition. This means reallocating resources to support renewable energy, sustainable initiatives, and investments in underserved communities impacted by the most by, most, by the climate change. Secondly, I request the university to be transparent with its donations and research grants from the fossil fuel industry. As alumni and donors, we deserve to know how our contributions are being utilized and if they are in alignment with our shared values of sustainability and environmental stewardship. The association with fossil fuel industry not only undermines the CU's credibility in climate research, but it also damages its brand as it appears to greenwash our accomplishments by supporting the very industry that perpetuates the climate crisis. So as, a, as an alumni, I, I think I bleed black and gold. And as a donor, I want the university to use my funds in a responsible way. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Todd. I'm a senior here at CU studying physics. I'm also an international student. I think my friends at the divest movement are gonna cover most of the finer points of the argument for divestment. I wanted to mention something more personal that weighs heavily on my mind day to day. I'm a US citizen, but I spent most of my childhood in China and Malaysia. In my time overseas, I learned at a visceral level how deeply the global south was affected by foreign markets and US investments. In China, I lived less than an hour away from the Foxconn building. The workers at this factory are making iPhones under such poor conditions they started to throw themselves from the building so that their families could collect compensation. I was 10 when this started. I began to wonder if I would see anyone falling from the sky on my walk to school. Two years later, I moved to Malaysia. Every summer on my flight back from beautiful Colorado, I had a bird's eye view of the breathtaking Malaysian rainforest. Every summer, there was less of it. It was burnt to the ground, replaced by oil palm plantations to satisfy Western demand. If any of you flew into DIA during the Marshall Fire, you'll know what I'm talking about. I saw that every year. To invest may not seem like anything more than a financial decision. I understand that as regents, your responsibility is to your constituents, but as investors, you hold far more power than just over CU students or Coloradans. It's a cruel irony that climate change will hurt my generation and my friends back home in the global south before it will hurt the people with the most power to do something about it. I urge you to extend your empathy beyond your generation, who will never see the full consequences of the climate crisis, and to the rest of the world who has already seen those consequences. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the Board of Regents. My name is Justin Cole. I'm a UCCS student, uh, student employee, and head of a nonprofit called 350 Colorado Springs. I'm an Air Force veteran of an, about nine years, and I was stationed in Colorado Springs back in 2013. The summer of that year, I experienced my climate watershed moment. 
Following the Black Forest fire, I connected with a displaced family and led a team to sift through the wreckage of their home. Now, I'm a civilian studying engineering at UCCS. Though Colorado Springs is often considered a politically conservative stronghold, our Student Government Association has strongly endorsed the Fossil Free CU petition calling on you to divest our system from fossil fuels. They have the broad support of students and faculty alike. You are not the only policymakers being called to divest as well. Right now, literally this second, students at, the, at Colorado State University are marching to the office of their president to call for the divestment of their endowment from fossil fuels. The clock is ticking and the movement is here. The political will to divest our system from fossil fuels needs to be here too. Thank you for your time, your attention, and your public service. Hi, my name is Kenzie Colcagno. I am graduating as a Phi Beta Kappa member with a degree in psychology, minors in leadership studies and communication, and a certificate in public health. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Since I was a kid, my overall goal in life has been to be happy. Although this may seem whimsical, I believe we all share this goal. I was 16 when I was faced with the decision of living or dying. For some unknown reason, I decided to give life one more chance, but I constantly wondered why there was so much pain in our world. From individual sufferings like suicide, gun violence, and depression, to global crises like war and climate change. It seemed contradictory because America was founded on the aspirations of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Fossil fuels have advanced our economy and lifestyles for the past 150 years. They have significantly improved our day-to-day -day living by accelerating the expansion of our technologies, the internet, and medicine. However, as life continues to evolve, the highly explosive and linear, linear nature of fossil fuels as energy is evidently unsustainable. Our globe is facing catastrophic natural disasters at alarming rates. A sixth mass extinction is unfolding in front of us, and international conflicts threaten the longevity of humanity. I am not advocating that disinvesting in fossil fuels is, just, is the solution to our world's problems, but I believe in a better world. And in one of the world's most advanced societies, we have the opportunity to better the health of our citizens and environment. I believe it is time for our actions to align with our values. And one step towards this goal is reinvesting in a just energy transition. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Fiona Nugent. I'm a sophomore student at CU Boulder, and I'm a CU legacy. Uh, Regent Vandriel, Regent James, Regent Smith, it's lovely to see all of you a second time. Uh, you've heard several important arguments today, from the legal perspective, to the environmental perspective, to the education perspective, to the moral perspective. Divesting away from fossil fuels is clearly the only correct choice. CU benefits from the brand of Colorado as sunny, outdoorsy, and slightly obsessed with skiing. Our university is renowned for its environmental research and its commitment to sustainability, but that commitment is clearly a lie. CU is lagging behind 1,560 institutions that have divested from fossil fuels. We are not asking for something impossible. We are asking for something that has precedent and is necessary. You are looking at many Gen Zers who day by day deal with climate anxiety because we envy what you have. You guys, no offense, have the opportunity to retire and live in a world that can still sustain you as a human. And we don't think we will have that. This is why we are so passionate today. So as CU brands itself as an environmental leader and a champion of students, please ask yourself, is this genuine? Or is this a lie? And it could become genuine. The beginning of this is divestment. And if you want to relieve us of some of that climate anxiety, this is the first step. Thank you. Hello, my name is Beth Osnes. I'm a professor of theater and environmental studies at the University of Colorado. And with me as a fellow wind turbine is I'm Denise Fernandez, and I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Environmental Studies at CU Boulder. I just want to say that I'm one of the faculty who did teaching across the curriculum, teaching climate across the curriculum. 
I'm one of the co-founders of the Center for Creative Climate Communication and Behavior Change, and I use the arts in order to engage young people in envisioning a new future. And I'm really interested in us being able to just um, feel good. So I don't know how often you get sung to, but I'm going to sing you a song that is from one of my um, musical pieces that I have done. And so it goes like this. Wind turbines are beautiful. They turn both day and night. Provide the world with good, clean energy that make our lives so bright. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ken, and thank you, Beth, for singing to us. <laughs> well done. First of all, on behalf of the board, I want to thank everyone who spoke at public comment. I know it takes a lot of courage to get up here and speak in front of this group, so we very much appreciate the time that you put into it and, and the passion that you bring. The Board of Regents is in the process of educating ourselves thoroughly about this topic, particularly about CU's investment policies and practices. We are also in the process of hiring a university treasurer who plays a key role with our investment strategy and activities. We expect that person will be hired this summer. Regent Chavez and myself are, are leading that uh, search process along with our shared governance groups. The board is keenly aware of its fiduciary responsibilities and our focus on keeping a CU education affordable. Investment earnings are an important revenue stream used solely for the benefit of the university community. They help fund things like student grants and scholarships, faculty programs, facilities, and research studies. Our investments are guided in part by state statute and investment best practices, and we engage professional investment advisors to help guide those decisions. We will continue to study this issue while keeping our focus on revenue streams that help us keep CU affordable and accessible to all that want to go here. Again, we want to thank you to all that spoke up today. We appreciate every bit of passion that you bring to this board. Thank you. And again, I want to thank everyone because we had quite a different number of topics that um, people spoke to. So thank you so much for coming to our meeting. Our next order of business is the chair report. And that's, that's me. Um, so it's great to be um, back on this campus in this beautiful, beautiful building, which I will point out um, is LEED version 4.0 gold certified and making it the most energy efficient mixed use facility on campus. And it's, again, it's beautiful. Before I continue, I want to take a moment to express my condolences to Dick Krugman, distinguished professor in the Department of Pediatrics and former dean of the CU School of Medicine, and to the entire Krugman family on the recent passing of Mary Krugman. Mary was a celebrated leader in nursing, both at CU and across the nation. She co-created the concept of graduate nurse residency programs that are widely considered a best practice in the profession and have been adopted across the country. The CU Board of Regents awarded Mary with one of the university's highest honors in 2020, the University Medal. All of us in the CU community are thinking of the Krugman family at this time. Last weekend was Earth Day, and the campuses celebrated it with various events and um, included the 30th Annual Sustainability Summit held on the Boulder campus. And I had the pleasure of getting to judge um, sustainability projects and actually I judged with several people that spoke today and it was just so impressive to see the enthusiasm of these students and their ingenuity. Um, one was really interesting it was 
we've got this issue now in, in the state where the compost um, collector is not collecting the compost any longer because there's too much contamination by plastics. And so they had a big, huge project on compost starting with AI to distinguish what is compostable and what has plastic. So, um, and this student had started a startup company already using AI, so pretty neat. Um, we also had the Conference of World Affairs on the Boulder campus, and its impact was to continue on with the UN right here, right now, climate change um, conference that it hosted, and the focus was on cli clim the climate crisis. This year marked the 75th anniversary of the Conference on World Affairs, and it's always impressive to see um, what's happening and all the panels and so forth. And um, I had the pleasure of attending the gala um, that evening, which was very special. Several of the board members, um, as well as President Solomon and our staff, um, attended the um, Association of Governing Boards National Conference on trusteeship in San Diego. Um, this is the first time I have attended in person because of COVID and it was really interesting to meet um, other people, um, hear what their challenges are and so forth. Uh, Callie and I went to one session in particular focused on systems and we realized our system is pretty darn good. So um, it, was, it was great to, to be with this group. Um, turning to athletics, there's been a lot of exciting things um, happening in athletics on the Boulder campus. Um, first of all, we had the spring scrimmage last weekend with the sold out game. Um, I, most of us didn't know what was really going on because there was different activities all across the field. But even though it, was a, it started out as a snowy morning, um, it was just great to see all the excitement and enthusiasm by students, faculty, staff, community members. The Buffs women's basketball team has had an incredible uh, year. And um, I was very lucky to be able to attend the Pac-12 tournament in Las Vegas. I just sat two rows off the floor at the team and got to high five them as they were going in and out of the tunnel. Um, they continued on to the um, NCAA tournament and made the Sweet 16 the first time in 20 years. Um, so much congratulations to Coach Payne and all of the student athletes on this team. And then I also got to attend, along with um, President Solomon, the uh, Student Athlete Academic Recognition, Recognition Ceremony. And this celebrates um, all student um, athletes with GPAs of 3.0 or higher. And we learned that the average GPA of the student athletes was the same as the average GPA of all students at the Boulder campus. So that's quite an accomplishment. And actually, the women's basketball team did the best job of increasing, increasing their, their GPA. Um, so hats off to our student athletes, because they are students first and athletes second. And then I just want to say happy birthday to Ken McConnellog yesterday and um, say farewell. This is his last board meeting. Um, we'll see if that's the case. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We have um, our new VP, Jeff Howard, who um, is going to do an excellent job. But thank you so much for all your years of service to the university. And I also want to mention um, tomorrow is uh, Jennifer um, Sabanet's uh, last day at the UC Denver. Sorry, I just blanked out on your last name. So. Um, Again, thank you for all your years of service, and uh, we'll miss seeing you too, and, and good luck for whatever your next steps are. So. And with that, I will hand it over to our president for his report. Thank you very much. And uh, it's great to see everyone today, and wonderful to be here at CU Anschutz, just such a uh, an amazing building that we're in on an amazing campus. Uh, I actually got the chance to spend about a, a, a day here. Uh, I don't know if it was this week or last week, honestly. 
But, um, but it was a great day. And I got to see some of the amazing things that are going on at CU Andrews. Uh, when when we, we got to meet with share governance leaders and talk about some of the, the, the exciting work happening here and also just some of the challenges that people are having uh, just uh, from on a day-to-day -day basis. And I really appreciated Chancellor Elliman and his team for, for hosting us. We also got to, to meet with, with folks from CU Innovations and, and those who are from this campus know all about CU Innovations and, and, uh, and they are making uh, some extraordinary things happen through uh, translating the work going on here into, into uh, commercial um, opportunities and also finding other commercial opportunities throughout the, throughout the, the, the state, country and, and world that that might have applications here with our with our scientists, and so I'm just—it's an inspiring thing, and I'm and I'm very grateful for the work going on here. We um, we got to tour the the CU uh, the CU Anschutz uh, Nursing School and the Sim Lab, and uh, and I encourage everybody to 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 take a look at that if you ever get a chance. And and Dean Dean Eli is doing really great work in terms of expanding the nursing program and getting it to every corner of the state. And, our, and he, in partnership with, with uh, Fort Lewis College in, in Durango, just started a nursing partnership with CU Anschutz and, and Fort Lewis that's bringing a CU Anschutz nursing degree to Southwest Colorado. Very exciting. And then we also got to go on a tour of the Gates Biomanufacturing uh, Facility where uh, magic is happening. And it's an incredible thing what's happening there in terms of uh, putting this this campus at the really at the the center of the of of, of the um, of opportunity, we're one of only five campuses in the country that have our own biomanufacturing facility like that, and it and, and it, it enables us to uh, to really uh, do do cutting edge research and apply that research in a way that very few few other institutions can. So very exciting. Uh, we also. Uh, I echo I echo what what uh, Chair Smith said about condolences to the Krugman family. We we will miss Mary, and we are incredibly grateful for all that she has done over the years to advance nursing and and CU Anschutz and healthcare for all Coloradans. Uh, I also wanted to to um, as, as we think about nursing and we think about advancing the work of the University of Colorado as a whole. I want to thank the state legislature and the governor for supporting higher ed this year. Uh, they approved uh, an 11 percent increase for higher education funding, state funding for higher education uh, during this last le during the current legislative session. They're not done yet, but that 11 percent is solid. So we'll go we'll go with that. And I'm I'm very grateful for for the for their um, support of higher education. Uh, I enjoyed attending the LAEF uh, dinner with with several of my colleagues here, the the Latin American Education Foundation. Uh, where, uh, which is an organization that provides scholarships to, to people to attend uh, college. Many of them come to see you. We, of course, want more of them. And, um, and I'm especially thankful to Tony Salazar, who's the former chair of the LAEF board. So thank you for, and he had a, a role there at the gala also. So it was fun to see that. Um, in, in March, we, we welcomed, so, so Leslie, mentioned Jeff Howard, our, our new VP for Communications. We're happy to have you on board. And, um, and Ken, we will we'll miss you, but I'm sure that we'll get to, to see you from time to time at happy hour and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just saying. Um, I'm looking forward to our, uh, to our CU in DC trip that's coming up soon. And this is an incredible thing that our, that our uh, Government Relations Office puts on in partnership with uh, this year in partnership with CSU and and CMU and in, in Grand Junction, and it's an opportunity for for um, for leaders from throughout the state who who um, apply and then get selected to participate in the trip to learn about the things going on in D.C., getting to meet with some of some leaders in various sectors in in Washington D.C. Everything from politics to media to to law. And it's a, it's a really, really exciting uh, trip. It's the first time we've done it, I think, in three years. We've had to cancel it a few times because of COVID. So we're really looking, looking forward to that getting going again. We had a wonderful um, Benson Gala, so thanks to those who were able to attend. And that's a, that's a, a, a gala where we celebrate some of our, our, our um, uh, donors who've, who have 
provided significant support to the university. And it was a great event where we had entertainment from, uh, from, from uh, some, of the, some of our students at, from CU Boulder, and we had a, a, a great master of ceremonies from UCCS, and it was really wonderful. It was a great event. Uh, and um, we also just got done with uh, uh, or awarding the President's DEI Awards, and thanks to Judy for her work with that. And uh, we recognize some really excellent work that's happening at campuses throughout, throughout the CU system. Uh, one, one thing that I just wanted to highlight, so many things I, like, I wanted to talk about in terms of the work that we're doing, but we, over the last, uh, last week or last couple of weeks, we had, we had a lot of people coming into our, into our state for, for um, a national security conference that was happening. We had a, a, few, a few of them stop by our campuses as well. And it is just so amazing to get to be able to share with people from the Department of Defense, NASA, organizations like that, about the, the work that we're doing on our campuses. It's extraordinary work that's happening. And, um, and, and sometimes they'll talk about how, how CU in Colorado is the best kept secret, and we don't want, we don't want to be a, a secret anymore. We want the world to know how awesome we are. And so, um, and so we're working to do that. And, um, but I'm very grateful for them coming by. And um, Regent Smith provided a lot of those athletics highlights that I wanted to provide too. So what she said on all of that. <laughs> and um, but one one that I did want to that I wanted to mention that that um, that wasn't on your list, but I'm sure it would have been if if you had had my notes. And and that's that um, uh, UCC UCCS student athletes also had a GPA of 3.0 or, or higher this fall. And, and the UCCS Athletics Department ranks 28th overall, or in the top 10% of the NCAA D2 um, D, um, standing. So it's really, it's really important, uh, or important and impressive work that's going on at, uh, in athletics at CU Boulder and at UCCS. And so we just want to recognize that. So uh, wonderful things that are happening on our campuses. And, and um, thank you to, to all who make that happen. So with that, I'm going to kick it off to, um, and oh yes, in graduation mention, as, as Ken just said here, and this, so Ken gets kudos for, for, rem Actually, for reminding me. Regent <laughs> so thank you. So it turns out, it turns out we're in graduation season. So, so congratulations to all the students who are going to be graduating soon. We have two of them sitting right there. And um, it's why we all come to work in the morning. So the reason, the reason we do these jobs is for you. And, um, and so congratulations to, to, to you two and to Rachel. I know that you're, you're graduating. You were, yeah, there you are. And others here too. And, um, and to the, the thousands of other students who have worked so hard to get to where they are today. So congratulations to them and thanks to the faculty and staff who, who helped them along their journey. Yes, congratulations to them. And with that, I'm going to kick it over to the chancellors for brief updates. And um, Chancellor Elliman had to be away for, for, for personal business, but we have Terry Carruthers here. So we'll start with you since we're in your house. Thank you so much. So Chair Smith and President Solomon, I just wanted to thank you again um, for your lovely comments about Mary Krugman. She was a wonderful lady. It was my honor to know her, and she was held in such high regard by all of us. So thank you for that. And President Solomon, thank you for spending time with us recently. We had a wonderful time that day, and we appreciated your time, and you gave a lot of the campus report in your report, but a couple things we can add. Um, next week, we're doing the official launch of the Gates Institute. While you've heard a lot about it, you'll hear more about it today. Um, they have, we have the Chancellor's Transforming Healthcare Series, and we're going to be kind of kicking things off officially with Dr. Terry Fry and with the support of the Gates family and Diane Gates Wallach. I mean, we couldn't do it without them. Uh, major recruitments on campus. We have a new graduate school dean, Dr. Jennifer Ricker, and so we're so happy about that. She's a professor of pathology, medicine, and endocrinology with a background in cancer research and a long history on this campus as an educator and a researcher. We're hoping, and Dr. Nairn I know is hoping, that we have the School of Public Health Dean search concluding soon. We think we're almost there and we're excited about that. It's an important position as well. And I'm excited about the Chief Human Resource Officer search because that's an important part of who we are and taking care of our employees. And we hope we will get that person here by June and things are moving around really well. 
Thank you to Felicity and so many others who helped us with that search. Uh, we moved into our net zero police and emergency services facility just last week. It's opened and almost fully transitioned. Thank you to the regents for approving that project for us. We are really grateful. They originally came to this campus and moved into a 1938 temporary building that was a barracks in World War II. And so it took us a while to get them out of there, but we're so thrilled that they're in this new state-of-the-art facility, um, which is, has incredible technology and we believe will enhance safety for our campus community. And just a, a little COVID tidbit, post-COVID, we're really excited. We're seeing more and more people choosing to come back to the campus, even if they're not in jobs that require them to be on the campus. And so more and more people are feeling left out and wanting to come back, and we're excited about that. So we're averaging about 5,000 people a day on campus, and that's just something that we feel good about. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Chancellor Marks. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, CU Denver continues to be a leader in convening important discussions about the future of our city and our state um, and beyond. And I thought I'd just share a few recent really cool events. This past week, um, and Regent Spiegel and Regent Chavez attended, we, had, we hosted the runoff forum for the Denver mayoral race, who I think ever, um, th th those of us who live near or around Denver, probably anywhere in Colorado, are paying a lot of attention. Um, uh, our outgoing Mayor Hancock happens to be a CU Denver alum, and one of the two uh, candidates running for mayor is also a CU Denver alum, so we'll see what happens. Um, we also hosted one of our most distinguished alum, uh, who's also currently a prof uh, psychology professor at Harvard, a couple of weeks ago for the Chancellor's Distinguished Lecture Series. And it was uh, apropos to some of the conversation we're having here today. He, uh, Dan Gilbert, gave a talk on the challenge of climate change and why our minds are wired to downplay threats like climate change in, 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 um, a, a, rather than more immediate threats like terrorism. It was very fascinating. Um, we also just hosted last week for the first time ever a 5280 Thought Forum on the future of Denver. And thank you, President Solomon, for helping us to support this event. It was an incredible event where a number of our faculty members, three of our faculty members in urban planning and one of our faculty members in uh, our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, served on panels with other esteemed professionals around the city and state to talk with, uh, to talk about issues like the future of the outdoor industry and sustainability, and also uh, and and the future of housing and the future of, of downtown Denver. Um, right now, you you may know that the city's summit of the Americas is happening. Denver was selected to host that, and I. I um, saw Regent Montera at an event yesterday, and, and it's ongoing through their events um, today and tomorrow as well. I'm proud to say that our faculty members and one of our partners are, are, are playing key roles in that summit. Um, Tyler Svidak, who's the executive director of the Colorado Smart Cities Alliance, was a key partnership that we have on campus, um, is doing, uh, did a workshop yesterday where they talked about smart cities technology and how important that is to the future of sustainability and the future of cities. And on Friday, Theo Edmonds, who's a research professor in our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, is doing a plenary panel. Um, and his talk is called Creativity and Brain Health in the Future of Work. Um, commencement, I hope many, I think many of you will be with us for commencement on May 13th. Um, we have over um, 2,300 graduates this spring, which is pretty incredible. Can't wait for that. We're also hosting the Regent Awards and Honorary Degree presentation next week, and I think I'll see many of you there. Um, recently, we hosted an event, I think uh, actually this week, that we're, we honored seven faculty members who've been with CU Denver for, this is their 25th year, and we're really proud about that. And recently, we also hosted a, a very large and new event to celebrate our staff service. S to, actually, both we had a, a, a separate event for staff and then one for faculty. Um, who are celebrating milestones, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years and more at CU Denver. Um, the last thing I want to comment is I just want to echo um, uh, Chair Smith's comments uh, about Jennifer Sobene. And Jennifer, where are you? Um, I, the, the, we're in the last few days of, of Jennifer's time with CU Denver, and I just want to um, underscore the recognition of her incredible leadership and service. It's, it's a big loss for CU Denver. It's one that we've been preparing for for a while. Um, uh, I have had such a wonderful opportunity, Jennifer, to collaborate with you. And I know that I, I'm going to share some comments, and I know that the sentiments of many, you've left such an incredible mark 
on our campus and your collaboration with the system and other campuses as well. Jennifer came to CU Denver seven years ago after a really impressive career with the Colorado Department of Higher Education, Front Range Community College, and also the governor's office. Um, since that time, she has provided significant leadership through some of the budget realignment work that, that we have been working through. She has guided the implementation of our 2030 campus plan. She has overseen the funding and the planning behind the Rob, Lola and Rob Salazar Student Wellness Center and our new City Heights Residence Hall and Learning, Com Learning Commons. Those have been some of our most successful and important initiatives at the institution. She served on the leadership team that, that, that got us through the COVID pandemic. And um, sometime, um, some way through all of this, she managed to earn a doctorate at CU Denver in leadership for educational equity in higher education in our School of Education and Human Development. I don't know how you do it all, Jennifer. I'm so proud of, of everything that, that you've done personally and the way that you come in. But um, I, I've said it before, I, I think the thing that I will remember about you the most is just the way that you treat people across our entire campus. You are beloved. Um, you are people first, you are empathetic, you are a, you are a developer of others, and, and we treasure you now and forever. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, so, Chancellor Reddy. Thank you, President Solomon. So last week, we celebrated our annual campus award ceremony by recognizing 21 members of the Mountain Lion family. And we also had the honor of hosting Angela Davis for our significant speaker event. This was the first time we had held this annual speaker series since 2019. And this was the largest crowd we have had on campus in a very long time. We had 1,100 people filling our gym to hear from Angela Davis. And I was thrilled that Regent Wanda James was able to attend that event as well. We are launching the UCCS Textbook Affordability and Access Program, or TOP, in fall of 2023. This new initiative aims to reduce the cost of course materials while increasing accessibility and convenience for the entire student community. Overall, the cost of course materials would decrease by about 30% for students. Essentially, they pay by the credit hour and they get course materials right on the first day. Every student will have their course materials. Um, during the past few weeks, I've been hosting a new format of in-person listening sessions across our campus, and I've enjoyed the opportunity to have in-depth discussions about important topics with our faculty and staff. We also hosted our mayoral runoff debate for the candidates at our In Center for the Arts last week. Um, we're also looking forward to hosting President Solomon on our campus next week. Um, also want to take this opportunity to introduce our new Vice Chancellor of Administration and Finance, Kathy Kerdes. Um, we're delighted that she joined our team and she actually came from Denver. So thank you for joining our team, Kathy. Um, Last but not the least, we are looking forward to seeing many of you at our commencement ceremonies uh, on May 12th. We are expecting 1,200 students to graduate in two ceremonies. We'll be giving out our inaugural partner award that day to an organization that has been a partner with UCCS since our campus was founded. Um, and this year, we'll have the youngest person to ever graduate from UCCS and earn their degree this spring. So the graduate will be 17 years and seven months. So thank you. Great, thank you very much. Chancellor DiStefano. Thank you, President Solomon, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we're excited to celebrate commencement on May 11th at Folsom Field, where we'll honor more than 6,000 graduating buffs. Uh, Governor Polis will be our commencement speaker and I'm looking forward to having President Solomon and many of our regents in attendance as well. We're also looking forward to the Regents Award Ceremony on May 10th, where we'll recognize outstanding alumni and supporters with honorary degrees, university medals, and the Chancellor's Impact Award. And there's much to look forward to in the next few weeks, and I'm very, very proud of our students, faculty, and staff for finishing strong. 
I also want to briefly highlight some of CU Boulder's milestones this academic year. In October of 2022, we saw the grand opening of the Rene Crown Wellness Institute. It's our newest institute on campus and it's focused on the wellness of children, young adults, and the adults who support them. And it's prioritizing community partnerships through the innovation research and, uh, and its programs. And this afternoon, you'll have a chance to hear from uh, the director of uh, the Rene Crown Wellness Institute, Sonia Dimidjian, uh, during our strategic uh, planning efforts. In November of 2022, we had the annexation of CU Boulder South. It was upheld in the municipal elections, allowing our campus to move forward and planning for this property. We remain committed to working with the city of Boulder and the community members as we envision the future of this project, which will add much needed flood protection, housing, and protected open space. As Regent Smith mentioned in December of 2022, we had the Right Here, Right Now Global Climate Summit. It drew registrants from 99 countries and some incredible speakers who shined a light on how climate change and human rights are connected. This was a unique opportunity for our campus to partner with the United Nations, an opportunity we wouldn't have had if not for the university's history of research and scholarship tied to climate. On the academic front, uh, with input from the faculty, CU Boulder advanced plans for a common curriculum this year, and also uh, implementation of many improvements for the student experience through the Buff Undergraduate Success Initiative. I'm really pleased to uh, celebrate a fall to spring retention rate, fall to spring, of 95.7% for first year students. It's the best we've seen in over 30 years. And I'm hopeful we'll continue to make progress in retention and graduation. We're also continuing to make progress on our campus-wide DE&I goals. And earlier this semester, we published an action, action planning dashboard to inform the campus about the progress happening in each unit and to celebrate their successes. And Sonia DeLuca Fernandez, uh, our Senior Vice Chancellor for DEI recently issued the first round of impact grants for projects that advance and operationalize units DEI goals. And we have a number of projects that will begin this summer and another round beginning in the fall semester with hopes of continuing these grants in the future. And this summer we plan to launch a campus faculty and staff affinity groups program that will provide faculty and staff with opportunities to network, tap into resources, and share their experiences with peers 